He's been riddled with bullets, set ablaze, electrocuted, and even injected with corrosives. So you didn't really think that a flaming basement would be Michael Myers' coffin now, did you? Here's the ending of Halloween Kills explained. During the conclusion of 2018's Halloween, the shape was last seen trapped in the burning basement of Laurie Strode's compound, a fiery snare the tactical heroine devised herself. As a severely wounded Laurie, daughter Karen and granddaughter Allison all fled to safety, they flagged down a passing truck and escaped into town. We then cut back to the basement and saw no sign of Michael. It's here where Halloween Kills picks up. No, 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 let it burn! Let it burn! Meanwhile, back at the compound, firefighters unwittingly free Michael from his pit of flames, and there's no gratitude from the guy whatsoever. He thanks his rescuers by immediately dispatching them in brutal fashion. In this very first scene, it's immediately clear that writer-director David Gordon Green isn't playing around. This is Michael Myers dialed up to 11, and he goes on to slay dozens of Haddonfield residents with a fury we've never seen before, and the camera never shies away. The story of Halloween Kills is simple. Michael goes on a murderous rampage as Haddonfield residents band together to hunt him down while Laurie recovers in the hospital. It all leads up to a bloody battle royale between Michael and an angry mob. As Laurie is rushed to the hospital, we cut to a local Haddonfield bar filled with residents who are not yet aware of what went down at the Strode homestead. During a memorial ceremony, we're reintroduced to three characters from the 1978 movie. Marion Chambers, who survived an attack when Michael first escaped Smith's Grove Sanitarium, and Lindsay Wallace and Tommy Doyle, the two kids Lori was babysitting on Halloween night. Tommy takes to the stage and tells the traumatic story of his encounter with Michael Myers. It's evident that he is suffering from PTSD. So when the news breaks that Lori was attacked at her compound and photos of a crashed Smith's Grove sanitarium bus flash on the television screen, this immediately triggers him to go into full-on vigilante mode. Armed with a bat provided by the bartender, he quickly stirs up an angry mob who've decided they will take the law into their own hands and hunt down Michael themselves. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, we're reintroduced to former town sheriff Brackett, who now works as a hospital security officer. In the original movie, he was also the father of Lori's best friend, Annie. She was also one of Michael's victims, so much like Tommy and the rest of the riled up mob, Brackett wants some good old fashioned revenge. When he gets here, I'm gonna kill him. Because 40 years ago, when I was a kid, yeah. he protected me. While Lori is sedated and recovering at the hospital, Karen and Allison learn that Michael is still at large. When Allison learns that her boyfriend Cameron and his father Lonnie are joining in on the hunt for Myers, she signs up, much against her mother's wishes. After all, Michael did kill her father in the previous film, so as you can see, everyone wants in on the action. Fun fact, Lonnie is a lesser known character who is only in a few scenes in the 1978 original. One of Tommy's bullies, he was also the kid being dared to enter the Myers house. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. During the final act, Lonnie takes a look at a town map and realizes that Michael's blood trail points directly to his childhood home, the Myers house, which is now occupied by a couple, Big John and Little John, who unfortunately have already met their end at the hands of you-know-who. As Cameron, Allison, and Lonnie drive up to the house, Lonnie decides to have a look-see and makes the ill-advised choice of going in alone. After a blaring gunshot is heard, Cameron and Allison rush in, only to discover yet another bloodbath. After they discover the bodies of Big John, Little John, and Lonnie, Michael appears and takes out Cameron by repeatedly bludgeoning him against the banister. During the bone-crushing struggle, he then sets his gaze on Allison, who suffers a fall down the staircase. As Michael readies to plunge his knife, Allison fearlessly screams, do it, just as he is pierced from behind by a pitchfork. Surprise, it's Mama Karen to the rescue. While Michael is phased by the sneak attack, she takes off his mask and taunts him with it. I didn't get it. As Michael pursues Karen behind the Myers house, 
He's lured to a quiet, empty street with nothing but his mask laying in the middle of the road. It's a trap. As he goes to reclaim it, the angry mob emerges, which includes Tommy and Brackett and numerous armed local residents. It's here Michael is met with some hardcore Haddonfield justice. Michael is riddled with bullets and stabbed multiple times while Tommy gets to put his rage and trusty bat to full throttle use. Even Karen gets in on the action. Grabbing a knife, she delivers the final blow. Or is it? Unfortunately, the mob lets their guard down and thinks it's over. As Karen heads back to the Myers house to check on her daughter, Michael springs to his feet and takes everyone out, including Tommy and Bracken. Back at the Myers house, Karen gazes out the very same window Michael once did, unaware of the carnage taking place outside. Soon, the victorious shape emerges from behind her and does what he does best. Karen's lifeless body drops to the floor. Could she be alive? It's doubtful, but you never know with these movies. But her lifeless eyes most likely spell death. The ending of Halloween Kills is the polar opposite of the previous film's conclusion. As we learned in 2018's Halloween, Karen had a strained relationship with her mother. She resented Lori and pegged her as a crazy alcoholic who spent her entire life obsessing over some boogeyman who randomly attacked her on a Halloween night. But she ultimately learned that the boogeyman was indeed real, and her mother was only preparing her. It may have taken a horrific event to bring them together, but Lori seemingly vanquished her nemesis and she did it side by side with her daughter, ultimately gaining her back. She succeeded at protecting her family from the evil she knew would one day return. In her eyes, she won, but as we learn in Halloween Kills, that victory was short-lived. Karen's demise sets the stage for what could be the darkest, most revenge-fueled Halloween movie yet. Losing her only child may very well push Lori Strode to the brink of madness. Will she torture herself for not being able to protect her daughter from the one thing she feared the most? Now, 40 years after the night that reshaped her life, the nightmare she dreaded so much, the one she tried so hard to prevent, finally came true. Lori is pretty much down for the count and recovering during most of Halloween Kills, and she's not around for the big showdown. So when word of Karen's death reaches her ears in the next movie, we may perhaps see the most unhinged version of the character yet. And then there's Allison, who seems to be living out a fate not too different from her grandmother. The Halloween curse now has infected a new generation of the Strode family. She has now lost two parents in the same night at the hands of Michael Myers. The question is, Will she spiral down a dark path similar to that of Lori, or perhaps she'll be stricken with a terrible guilt in addition to all that grief? After all, she did disobey Karen, who implored her to stay at the hospital. The police are out there looking for him. You think you're the one that's gonna find him? Instead of sitting tight and staying safe, she became obsessed with settling a score and allowed herself to get swept up in the whole mob mentality. Had she stayed at the hospital, her mother would still, most likely, be alive. As for Michael, how could he have survived? In this new trilogy, you have people describing him as evil incarnate or saying things like, the more he kills, the more he transcends. But the source of his unnatural abilities has yet to be explained. A man couldn't have survived that fire. No human would be able to withstand the pulverizing inflicted on him during the Halloween Kills finale. Is he superhuman? Or maybe even something supernatural? So far, it hasn't been addressed in David Gordon Green's saga, but we may find out next year when the trilogy wraps up with Halloween Ends. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite slasher movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.